Hello, this is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodwin. This is Christopher Draves. Hey and this show is brought to you by Hockey Our Locker. good friends at Hockey Locker. 2002 West Hart Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can give them a call at 414-800-7585 or visit HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. You'll get all your hockey gear, all your referee gear. You can get your skate sharpened. You can get Admiral's jerseys like the ones I'm wearing. You can get your Nashville Predator jerseys. You can get NHL jerseys from all teams in the Midwest. Um, they're low on jerseys right now. They only have one Wild jersey, two Preds jerseys, um, and a few of the older Blackhawks jerseys. Thank you for the update. No, that's a good update because uh, apparently... And they actually just got a big stock of uh, uh, Predators hats and winter hats. Yeah. But yeah, uh, when you go into the store, tell them how we sent you, and uh, yeah, check them out on their website. You can get the per you can get your skates fitted perfectly for you if you need new skates. Um, yeah. But, uh, also, yeah. you can get a jersey customization. Um, the Admirals charge seventy five, and so does he. Oh, uh, we're about to talk about something serious, and you're looking like a dork. Did you not figure? Yeah. It would be a bit insensitive, you being goofy. Yeah. Um. Right now, we are sending prayers to Oscar Limbaum and the uh, Flyers. The Flyers organization. His family and the Flyers organization. Um. He was diagnosed with cancer today. Uh, a weird, a a, a, a odd form, form of bone cancer, I believe it was. Yes. Uh. If it is bone marrow, um. Only I think the the and and I hate saying this as a fam as someone who's lost family to it the survival rate of bone marrow bone marrow cancer is about twenty five percent. Yeah, it's not good. So uh, our thoughts and our well wishes out to his family and friends and, he is, and the entire organization. And he's a young kid with a lot of upside. Yeah, so, he was a good player to watch. It's sad that he has to go through this now, unfortunately. So we're also sorry that we have to do bad news on back-to-back -back days, but we don't, we can't predict. We can't it. run away from it. Yeah. We have to address it, man. All right. So normally I'm wearing a hat, but for whatever reason today I'm warm. So sorry. <laughs> oh, uh, keep it going. I forgot to do it. I typically. <laughs> All See, right. I was trying to make Daniel sweat a bit, so I uh, forgot to open up the window in our studio. All right, um, so, uh-oh. <clears throat> so, uh-oh, uh, yeah, the Admirals beat the Chicago Wolves tonight 4-1. Wolves, my Wolves. Don't you dare give Chicago credit for having a uh, yeah. team. The Admirals beat the Rosemont Wolves 4-1 tonight. It was a, I'd say, pretty close to a sellout crowd at the Panther Arena tonight. I'm happy that everybody came out to the game and they got to see a victory, which tends to happen a lot nowadays. Maybe it'll Ooh, come back here. more. Sorry about that, folks. Pizza just got delivered. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Uh, you should check out the attendance real quick before I go into the stats because we had it packed. 8,821. Therefore, $3 of 8,021 is 26,000 uh, and some odd number. I can't uh, yeah, remember. 20, it's, about, it's over 26 grand that was donated to uh, what charity was that that they were donating? Children's to? Hospital. Yeah. So stick taps to everybody that uh, came out. I mean, I suppose I'll just do the stick tap. Uh, twenty-six thousand four hundred and sixty-three dollars. So stick taps to everybody that came out. You got to watch an Admiral victory, and you donated money to a, a very good charity. And if you go to um, Wendy's tomorrow, you get a free frosty with a. Oh purchase. yeah, frosty four, baby. Woo! All right, um. Yeah, it was a fun game. Uh, Rosemont came out to play. They actually played solid defense against the Admirals today. The Admirals really had to work for that victory tonight. They really did, but they got the W, and that's all that counts. You going to add something to it? Yes, actually. The Admirals are one of only, well, today, two teams hit the 20-win plateau. The Admirals did it first. Um... They have 44 points in the Tucson Roadrunners, who play, I think it was like six or eight games less. Yeah, and Tucson, uh, they beat San Antonio tonight in the shootout. 
We were all hoping that San Antonio would figure a way to pull that one off. Yeah, but look at where San Antonio is in the standings. Do you really think that they're good enough to beat Tucson? They're in the fourth place spot, which is going to get them into the playoffs. Okay. But also, if you look at uh, their division compared to our division. We have the stacked division. Yeah, the Central is stacked. Also, uh, the North division, which is Rochester. Toronto, Utica, Laval, Bellevue, Syracuse. Eastern Clayton. Conference, basically. Yeah. Um, come out uh, to the next Admirals game on Wednesday, the 18th. It's a winning Wednesday. If they win, you get a ticket to the next Wednesday game. Also, come out next Thursday, or next next Thursday, next Friday, and uh, get an Anthony Richard bobblehead. Oh, yeah. And also, welcome back, Freddie Boudreau. Also, I want to add in, Wednesday is also the 150th anniversary of the typewriter. Huh. Just and so we're using the uh, advanced version of the typewriter as we do this. Actually, the typewriter was created in our arena. It was invented in yeah, our no, arena. It was uh, created in Milwaukee. I didn't know exactly where in Milwaukee, but I knew it was created here. Yeah, because our arena actually in the beginning was a news building, uh, uh, a newspaper printing press building, huh. before it was an arena. Wow, look at that. We're teaching stuff about something other than hockey. Hey. All right, so shall we start breaking down this game? Yeah, go for it. I got to kind of turn the bottom. All right, shots on goal in the first period were 18-5 Milwaukee. Uh, shots on goal in the second were 9-6 uh, Chicago. And then it was 12-8 Chicago in the third. Uh, but Milwaukee still outshot them 32-26. Uh, both teams were 0 for on the power play. Uh, Chicago was 0 for 6. Milwaukee was 0 for 3. Uh, Chicago had four penalties for a total of eight minutes. Milwaukee had seven penalties for a total of 14 minutes. All right. Daniel, take it away. All right, scoring in the first is Reed Duke, his seventh for Chicago, with an assist from Nicholas Waugh, his seventh, and uh, yeah, Paul Coulter, Cotter, Cotter, Paul Cotter, his fourth. Uh, then Anthony Richard scored his seventh with an assist from Jeremy Davies, his 11th, and Mika Salamaki, his fourth. Then uh, Frederick Allard got his second with an assist from Tanner Janot, his seventh, and Matthew Olivier, his eighth. And then Tommy Novak got his fifth with an assist from Cole Schneider, his 17th. Um, Schneider then got the empty netter, his 8th, with an assist from Matt Donovan, his 14th, and Frederick Allard, his 11th. Um, as far as that, we had one bout, wait, I, th uh, I thought there was a fight in this game, but I could be huh? wrong. I swear there was a, a fight, but never mind. Oh, somebody got knocked out in like one shot type thing, I thought. Uh, Unless that guy just got hit in the face by a stick. All I know is that I saw oh, a bunch drop and they like hit the ice. Reed Duke jumped um, um, Jeremy Davies. So that was what happened. Uh, three stars of the game were uh, Mika Salamaki with one assist. Steven Santini with no points, but for whatever reason, <laughs> he was the star of the game. He had four penalty minutes and one shot. So, okay. Um, and Troy Grosnick with 25 saves on 26 shots. I swear, if they still vote for this stuff, whoever voted for Santini. I mean, he played good defense, but... Um, I mean... Hey, sometimes Cole Schneider, Cole Schneider had two points. Um, Frederick Allard had two points. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm saying that these guys had their, you know... Oh, on my crap list. Ellie Tolvanen, Lucas Craigs, that's it. Referees in the game were Andrew Howard and Alec Alex Norman. Norman? Okay. And uh, Tyler Gregory. Why do you have fir two first names? Okay. And Mike Daltrey. Um... So, what was your overall thoughts of game one against the Wolves? 
Yes, because we play them tomorrow. The Admirals are now 3 0 0 and 1. Yep. And their next game with the Wolves is uh, tomorrow night. Also, also, props to the Admirals, seventh straight home win. Yeah. And that, but like I said, tomorrow they play the Wolves again at the uh, Rosemont or the Allstate Arena down there in Rosemont, Illinois. For those of you people that live south of the border. Yep, have some That's fun. That's the state border. Don't be making a racial, Daniel. He likes set me up for jokes. He does set me up for jokes. I have a few. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, he sets me up for jokes. All right, anyways, tomorrow night, uh, the Nashville Predators take on the Dallas Stars for the first time this season. Let's break it down, shall we? All right. Uh, basically... <sighs> Their uh, front forward line would be uh, Jamie Ben, Matias, uh, Yanmark, huh? Yanmark. Yeah, Yanmark and Tyler Sagan. Uh, Jamie Ben has uh, six goals, nine assists. Uh, Yanmark has eight assists and three goals, and then Tyler Sagan has six goals, seventeen assists. Uh, Their second line is uh, Alexander Radulov. He has nine goals, nine assists. Uh, Rook Hintz, uh, 11 goals, 3 assists, and then Joe Pavelski, 7 goals, 7 assists. Uh, just for future reference, it's pronounced Rope. Uh, Rope Hintz? Yep. Okay. Um, only reason I know that is because of the playoffs last year. They said his name a lot. Um, and then their defensive pairings, we have, uh, what is that, uh, Essa Lindell, 2 goals, 8 assists, uh, John Klingberg, uh, eight assists, two goals. And then I wouldn't even really worry about their uh, second line on defense as far as uh, Jamie Olin. What is that? Alexia? Yeah. And Roman Pollock. They they just get a bunch of assists, so they basically uh, help out the offensive lines. Honestly, Dallas doesn't really scare me. I mean, besides maybe the Pavelski, Hints, Radulov line. They really don't have anything as far as offense goes. Uh, their defense is basically just a bunch of guys that gets assists. Like, seriously, um, let's see here. We got Taylor Fedun. He has one goal. Uh, then we got Klingberg with two goals and Lindell with two goals. Everybody else just gets a bunch of assists. So, if, yeah, if you shut down their first two lines, I think the Predators could beat the Stars tomorrow. Uh, Daniel, let's say you on the goalie front. Well, that would be if I could ever get it to load. You're getting close. Well, first off, i got to get this to switch. Oh, there we go. Okay. I'll see. Does this website allow me to talk about goalies? Uh, yeah, you want me to do the goalie? I got it. All right. I just got the report. Hey, do your thing, because I can talk about the goalies, too, if you need all right, I'm running the report right about now. All right, your goalies are Ben Bishop with 23 games played. He started in 23. He has 12 wins, 6 losses, 3 overtime losses, 1 shutout, no points, 2 penalty minutes. Oh, he has a save. I, 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 I don't know yet. <laughs> he, had a save he has a save percentage of .933. With a 2.07 goals against average. Then we have Anton Kudobin. He has uh, 12 games played, uh, 10 starts, 6 wins, 5 losses, 1 overtime loss. Um, he has no shutouts with 2 assists. He has a .922 save percentage and a 2.39 goals against average. So their defense is pretty uh, greedy. Yeah. Yeah, but like I said, there's really nothing offensively or defensively that really scares me. I mean, getting a bunch of assists is okay, but you got to have people out to put the puck in the net. All right, Dallas in their last 10 is 5-3 and 2. Uh, Actually, they, they have the identical record as we do. What are they on a winning streak, losing streak? What are they on? Overtime. What do you mean overtime? I believe they won in overtime. What's their winning and losing streak? Like they don't have one. It just says OT one. 
It doesn't say streak or anything? No, there's streaks. The NHL just goes by their streaks. They just go by wins and losses. They don't oh, never like, mind. So it don't tell you if they're on a three-game or a four-game winning streak? Stuff they're like just that. on a streak of going to overtime right now. Mm. On to All right, well, whatever. But you said their record was what in their last ten? Five, three, and two. All right. Um, Hopefully we could pose a good challenge for them. After tonight, um, the Admirals have 44 points, get putting them four points ahead of the Tucson Roadrunners for first place in the league. However, if you go by win percentage, the Admirals are second in the league to the Tucson Roadrunners who play less games. So yeah. we'll see where this ends us well, up. Well, after tomorrow's game with Chicago, then uh, the Admirals have a home game Wednesday, like you said. I'm not sure the Predators play next after tomorrow. Monday. All right. Literally, it goes Monday, Tuesday, Preds, Wednesday, Admirals, Thursday, Preds, Friday, Admirals, Saturday, Preds, Sunday, Admirals, Monday, Preds, and then we're off for the holidays. Crap, I am going to see you like 10 days in a row. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I even told you, like, the, the next week is just going to be gnarly, so expect a lot of content. All right, so it looks like we do need to step up our TV game so we can watch other games, so that way, yeah. <sighs> well, it is nice that we're they're not playing on the same night. <laughs> not really, because it's uh, kind of nice when we have like two to do. Like tomorrow's going to be a double, which is going to help, you know. Yep. Um. So because of the double, nice segue, by the way. Yeah. Um. Because of the double, we are moving our normal in the system, which is on Saturdays. Um, to today, because of the double, we do not want to be giving you guys an hour-long show. Yeah, we'll be doing that uh, in the system in a little bit. Right now. We're done. When the hell am I going to be able to eat my pizza? I'm Should doing the, staring me in the face. I'm doing the Florida Everblades right now, so you're good. <laughs> I have it. I'm going to eat some food because I'm hungry. But, yeah, yeah I did. did. I did my part. I did the previews for the stars, and you don't need the wolves. Just watch yesterday's video and our recap, and you're good. Yep. Oh, Joe Pendenza got sent to the Florida Everblades. Update everybody uh, in your transaction news. <laughs> All right. Well. I'm going to be talking a lot, so I had to get something to drink. All right, so first up, we got Ken Appleby. You're eating, so you shouldn't be too hungry. Um, he is uh, 24 years old, six foot four, 209 pounds. Catches left-handed. That means he blocks right-handed. Um, this year for the Florida Everblades, he has 18 games played, 2.34 goals against average, and a .910 save percentage. Um, I do not have his win-loss record because I don't have that kind of money to be putting up on Elite Prospect right now. Um, and then we got Cam Johnson, or Cameron Johnson, which is his legal name. For whatever reason, they have it on here as Cam Johnson. Uh, he's 25 years old, six foot one, 205, catches left-handed, means he blocks right-handed. Um, he played 11 games with 2.50 goals against average pop-ups. Um, he has a .914 save percentage. All right, on to the defenseman of the group, Arvin Atwal. Uh, he's 24 years old, six foot tall, shoots right-handed. We need one of those. We call him up. Uh, he's played 10 games for the Florida Everblades. Or 16 games, sorry. He's played 16 games for the Florida Everblades. He has 5 assists in 59 penalty minutes with a plus 7. So he's a little uh, feisty guy. And then we have Adam Smith. He is 23 years old, 6 foot 1, 194. He shoots left-handed. And his contract's through 2019-2020. He's played 16 games, has one goal, one assist, two points, and a minus one. Uh, did I forget anything? Nope. 
All right, so up next we got Hunter Garlett. Um, I know the Admirals fans aren't probably very familiar with him, but he is uh, 24 years old, five foot nine, uh, 172, shoots right-handed. He is a uh, center. Uh, he has played in 22 games, has three goals, six assists, nine points, and a plus four. Zach Magwood. Good old Zach Magwood. I'm used to seeing you. Uh, 21 years old, 5'10", 190, shoots right-handed, is signed through 2021. Um, he has played in 22 games, has... Seven goals, 11 assists, and is a plus 13. If anybody get anybody gets a call up, he should be the guy. <clears throat> uh, next up, we got Joe Pendenza. I believe he was sent down on a conditioning assignment. He's 29 years old, five foot 11, uh, 190. He shoots left-handed. Uh, he has played nine games for the Admirals with one point. And he's played in two games for the Florida Everblades with two goals and an assist with a plus three. So he went to, to the ECHL and just started lighting it up. <clears throat> and then finally, we have Hugo Waugh. 22 years old, six foot one, where he shoots right handed with contract through 2021. Um, he has played 24 games for the Florida Everblades with three goals, two assists, five points. And a plus minus of zero. And that is your Florida Everblades update. Next, we have in the system, which is all the players that the Predators have drafted. Uh, still prayers to this guy's teammate, Philip Tomasino of the Niagara Ice Dogs. He, uh, Tucker Knight, or Tucker Knight. Now I'm thinking of wrestling here. Help. Help. <laughs> Uh, Tucker Tynan, mm. um, he uh, was gruesomely injured on, um, what was it, yesterday? It was yesterday, um, and uh, our thoughts and prayers are still with his family and the Niagara Ice Dogs uh, organization. Uh, he has played in 31 games, has 17 goals, 24 assists for 41 points, and a minus 2. And then we got Igor Afanasyev. He has uh, 26 games played, 10 goals, 17 assists for 27 points. That's a 1.40 points per game with a plus 11. And then up next we got David Ferrans, who has played in 17 games, 10 assists, 12, uh, 10 goals, 12 assists with a 1.29 uh, points per game with a plus 7. You want to take over? Uh, the next would be Patrick Harper. Yeah, he plays for uh, Boston University, uh, Boston College. Well, no, Boston University, because Boston College is something completely different. <laughs> well, anyways, uh, NCAA uh, college hockey. Mm. He has 15 games played with 8 goals, 13 assists, and a plus 12. And then, uh, who is that? Yuso, uh, Yuso Parsonin. Uh, he plays for, what is his TPS uh, under 20. Uh, what uh, country is that, Daniel? Sweet. Yeah, uh, uh, 20 fin games played. Uh, one of the two. I don't remember, I think. Oh, that's Finland. Sweden's the blue one. All uh, right, anyways, uh, 20 games played, 7 goals, 14 assists, with plus 10. Then we got uh, Alexander Campbell. Uh, he plays for the Omaha, the Omaha Lancers in the USHL. 17 games played, five goals, 13 assists, with a plus two. And he also has 1.06 points per game. Then we got, uh, let me get here. We have what's that? Uh, Joachim Kondalik. Joachim Kondalik. Yeah, uh, University of Connecticut college hockey here in the states. Um, uh, he has 16 games played, 6 goals, 7 assists, with a plus 3. Then uh, we have uh, Simeon uh, Chistoff. He plays for uh, Topar Yufa in the MHL. Um, it's the uh, juniors for Russia. Yeah, uh, 16 games played, 3 goals, 8 assists. Then we have uh, Hardy Hominen. 
a uh, uh, hardy hominin octel. He you played for uh, IF. Uh, oh, I forgot. Uh, he played for IF. Uh, what is that? Borkloven of the uh, Swedish Elite League. They had 29 games played, four goals, five assists, plus 14. A uh, great mishmash of the University of North Dakota. College Formerly Island. the Fighting Sioux. Yeah, anyways, uh, 17 games played, three goals, seven assists, with a plus nine. Then we have uh, Spencer Stadsny of uh, the University of Notre Dame. 16 games played, two goals, six assists, with a plus three. We have Vladislav Yuryamenko. Uh, for Dynamo Minsk of the KHL, that's the Russian version of the NHL. Uh, 29 games played, two goals, five assists, with a negative 13. Uh, most likely you will see him on the move next year due to the KHL is adapting a salary next year. Uh, uh, next on the list we have Isaac Walton.